Hello, welcome. In this video, I'm going to explain how the throttle barrel system works on a two-stroke carburetor. I'm not actually going to go through the whole workings of the carburetor because I've already got a video on YouTube there that explains all of this. So I've put together now this video which just explains specifically how the throttle mechanism works the barrel mechanism that is and it's concentrated to that specifically and so in a nutshell this is just a shortened version of my full video of how a carburetor works and so here goes okay so we're going to be looking at this type of carburetor one that you'd normally find on a strimmer or something like that this of course is the throttle cable that's connected to the trigger the throttle trigger on the machine and this is the carburetor's throttle lever and connected to that is the inner part of the throttle cable, which of course moves its position. It moves the lever's position accordingly. And of course, when the lever moves position, it opens up the air hole here, the inlet, to allow air to go into the engine. But I'll explain everything in a minute. Now let me simplify this drawing even more, so it's more like a somatic diagram. There we go. First of all, let me explain this structure here. This is the equivalent of an inlet butterfly. And what I mean is that it opens and closes, allowing air to go in through the carburetor to the engine. And it's in the shape of a little plastic barrel, so like a cylindrical shape. And it turns this way. And what happens is, when the throttle cable pulls this lever at the top here, and pulls it in the direction of the arrow, what actually happens, it reveals a hole there, so that now air can rush straight through and into the engine. And of course, when the throttle lever is released and the throttle cable allows the throttle lever at the top there to go back to its original place, it closes because it spins back round again. So that's a very simple idea, very basic and simple, but it's effective. It's just a barrel that spins round to reveal a hole. Again, that's quite different from your usual carburetor that you'd normally find on your two stroke. And that's because in the centre there, we've got what we call an inlet butterfly. And that basically just flips open and closed to allow air in or blocks the air. And that's all to do with this lever here. This is connected to the throttle cable and it moves its position and opens and closes the butterfly accordingly. Simple as. So back to our carburetor then. And another important structure you wouldn't find on the carburetor I've just shown, on your average carburetor, is this here. This here is part of the main jet and that's what allows fuel to come up into the inlet. And you'll see it in its working form very shortly, but I just wanted to go through some of the differences between the two types of carb. When the operator presses the throttle trigger, that then tensions this throttle cable, of course, which moves the throttle lever and rotates this barrel beneath, revealing this hole. And obviously, being the throttle, this regulates how fast or slow the engine will run. When it's open full like this, it's open to maximum airflow going into the engine, and so engine revs will be at maximum. And this particular type of carburetor has a unique structure in there, and it's one that a conventional type of carburetor doesn't have quite the same. This is actually part of the main jet that feeds the engine with fuel, and we'll just take a closer look. And in taking a closer look, the first thing we'll notice there, we've got like a plunger or a rod. And that plunger is directly connected to this upper part of the throttle mechanism here. And we can see that that rod is centered inside a tube area there. This is the main jet, and it extends right down through the center of the carburetor, right down into the metering area there. We'll take a look a little closer again, and if we look there, we can see what appears to be like a little seat for the plunger to sit into. So the end of the plunger here is of the same shape of this seat and at the moment it's in the open position but when the throttle trigger is released and this throttle barrel here is rotated into its closed position imagining we could see through there with x-ray vision we'd see that the plunger is fast onto its seat and so when the carburetor is resting and not operating this is the position the plunger will be in it'll be sitting in its seat like that and the way it's moved off its seat is by way of moving the throttle lever when we press the trigger and the throttle lever moves the special design in the throttle mechanism makes it so that the throttle lever and the throttle barrel rise upwards as it rotates open and of course, because that plunger is also directly connected to the throttle barrel, it rises up with it, lifting the point off its seat. So let's imagine then that this carburetor is fixed to a machine and we've just primed it up and we're going to try and start the machine. 
so with them we can see just how the carburetor works. And just for illustration purposes and to make things a little simpler, let's open the throttle wide as we can. Because of course we don't have to always do that when we start a machine, sometimes we only need it partially open. So the throttle is now set and let's now imagine that the operator has pulled the starter pull cord. And so the engine started turning over, it's now cranking and that's drawing in air through here, through the inlet. So that's got the ball rolling and we can see there that the air is travelling through there nicely towards the engine. And because the throttle's wide open and this plunger is nicely off its seat, the air rushing in towards the engine is drawing here. It's drawing air out of the pipe here and drawing it from down below. So what it's doing is it's creating a vacuum and that vacuum is drawing on this fuel here down below and allows fuel to flow upwards through the main jet here, through this pipe, and it's released here out into the venturi where the air takes it through into the engine for combustion. So the engine's now fired up and there's a constant supply of air going into the engine now that the engine's pulling through the venturi and that's dragging out there, creating that vacuum and dragging out all of that fuel from right down this main jet here and into the centre of the carburetor. So the Venturi has now began receiving a supply of fuel from the metering area here. Providing the engine's running and the throttle's open, then the through road of fuel will just continue this way now, as it is, right round the system and up through the main jet and into the Venturi. And of course this screw sets the idling speed. And the way it does that on this particular carburetor is that this throttle barrel is allowed to rotate back towards its original closed position. And when the throttle trigger is released, this cable is relaxed and that allows the throttle barrel to rotate back towards this way because it's on a spring and it wants to spring back this way and it's pressing the trigger on the throttle which overcomes that spring. So releasing the trigger allows it to come back to its original state. And of course, because the throttle lever above here is attached to the throttle barrel, that rotates back with it. And it's the back of the throttle lever which contacts the end point of that idler screw. And because the back of the throttle lever is resting on the point of that idling screw, that idling screw now can be used to adjust the idling speed. And so if we were to turn that idling screw now clockwise, pushing it inwards, it would push against the throttle lever, turning the throttle barrel and opening the throttle. And that would increase the idling speed revs. And if we were to turn it anti-clockwise, then the barrel would spin backwards again because it's on a spring. So it would close that airway and then it would reduce the idling speed rate. OK, I hope that explains things, but please do put in the comments section if there's anything you would like me to do a video on. And if you have benefited from this video, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.